It's Dave again. So uh, right now I am in a town called Pythagorio. It is on the island of Samos in Greece. And Pythagorio is apparently where Pythagoras came from. In Greek, I guess they say Pythagorio, or uh, Pythagoras, actually. Pythagorio is the town, Pythagoras is, is the philosopher. And they have a monument here. Uh, it's fairly recent, I think it's, it, uh, maybe I can find a date on it. But, let's see, Pythagoreo. So same yes. I don't know. Anyways, 580 to 496 BCE, so approximately 500 years before Jesus. He probably lived about the same time as, uh, oh yeah, same time as Buddha, same time as uh, Mahavira, same time as Confucius. All these guys, uh, it's, it's said that he was actually a student of Zoroaster, so Zarathustra from the Zoroastrian religion. If that's true, um, yeah, this says 1987 is when this was made. Um, Canada is a about Montreal, Canada. Um, Alright, well, a couple things about him. He was a vegetarian, first of all. He was a mathematician, probably better known today for his mathematics. Uh, the Pythagorean theorem, which is that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And uh, you can see this is the, the right angle of the, uh, the triangle. This is what that statue symbolizes. I'm getting rained on, so I'm going to turn this off. Uh, but here I am, Pythagorio. This is uh, my favorite philosopher. And I'm going to go find some place to eat lunch. Maybe I'll find a vegetarian place since he was a vegetarian. Uh, I'm also going to go to the museum. <coughs> Maybe I'll find some stuff about him there. I know that he had the uh, his school, kind of like Plato had his, the academy, uh, Aristotle had the Lyceum. Uh, they all had their own schools, and uh, Pythagoras' school was the semicircle of Pythagoras. So I'm going to go see if I can find a location for that. I think it's in a cave, and I'm planning to visit that cave tomorrow. So... Uh -uh. See what else I could find. Maybe the museum would be a better help for where these things are located. The water is amazingly clear. I don't know how well you can see in there. But there's a whole bunch of like little sea urchins. Uh, little black round things in here. They're all sea urchins. And there's a bunch of little Greek fishing boats. So, nice little seaside village. A Greek seaside village is on an island in the Aegean Sea. It's actually pretty close to Turkey, to uh, Miletus. Uh, they had the, the Milesian philosophers like Thales and Anaxagoras and all those guys. It's very close to that. It's an island, probably the, the closest island to that. Um, that's, uh, that's in Turkey today. So I'm sure one of these days I'm going to go to Turkey. Uh, go to Ephesus, where Paul wrote his letter to the Ephesians. I pretty much visited all of Paul's locations in Greece, <clears throat> where he visited. Actually, Paul came here too. Uh, he did, there's a mention in, in one of his letters that he uh, stopped by Saint, uh, Samos. So. Dave again. Well, right now I am inside of P 
Pythagoras well Pythagoras's cave or a Pythagoras cave I don't know how well you can see any of it hopefully this will come out better than it looks on my camera or my phone but apparently this is the cave that Pythagoras uh, well stayed in um, a couple of theories of why he stayed here uh, might have been where he had his school the semicircle of Pythagoras it's one well yeah I don't know if I believe that one though because <clears throat> now that I've been here uh, it doesn't seem like a good place to have a bunch of people um, it's pretty uh, pretty isolated in the mountains kind of hard to get to um, now there's a couple theories that he fled here because uh, for a couple reasons a couple different reasons uh, first one there's the, the tyrant of the island of Samos I believe his name was Poly, Polycrates, Poly, Polycrates or something Polycrates Polycrates anyways he was a tyrant and didn't like Pythagoras so uh, I guess was an enemy of his and so uh, Pythagoras had to flee um, and this is where he fled to I don't, I'll have to look, look into that a little bit more and there's another theory that oh, actually they're, they're little church, little temple type things, little shrines I believe these are Greek Orthodox uh, but okay so there's another theory that when he was in uh, Italy there was a uh, yeah, like, I guess like a, a wealthy a wealthy person there that wanted to learn all of his secrets wanted to be taught all of the secrets that Pythagoras had all the knowledge that he had and Pythagoras refused to teach him so uh, he gathered some people together to to hunt him down and try to kill him and force him to teach him I guess the reason that he wanted to be taught these things was so that he could use them for I guess bad reasons like uh, well mil military type weapons you know you use mathematics to uh, create siege weapons and stuff uh, so catapults and things and uh, well he refused and uh, another theory is that this is where he fled to when he was fleeing for his life that would have been the, the later years of his life when he was you know just before he died I suppose that's another theory but I don't know which one to believe I guess the one about uh, Polycrates Polycrates however you say his name it's probably the most uh, believable one. Uh, I believe he was the uh, kind of like the king of the island of Samos, the, the tyrant of Samos. Not really a monarchy, not really a king, just the the ruler of Samos. And he had a lot of influence, a lot of power. So uh, I can see Pythagoras fleeing here before going to Italy, perhaps, um, where he started his his school there. So I'm, I'm still on my search, my quest for the, the semicircle of Pythagoras. So I have a feeling I'm going to have to go to Italy to find it, though. It's probably in Crotone, in the, the heel of the boot of Italy. So, but anyways, it's Dave. I'm signing off from Pythagoras' cave. All right, bye. It's Dave again. So today... I'm in Samos. Actually, I'll go to the water so you can see what's over here. Uh, I'm leaving today. My, my, my plane leaves in a couple hours. Um, so before, uh, before I go to the airport, I decided to come to the Temple of Ira. Looks like somebody's naked over there. Um, all right, well, 
The water's really clear here, I noticed. I'm in an archaeological park. Here's a, an old building. I'm not sure how old or what, what it was. Actually, this looks like a, a pillbox, probably from World War II. Um, Alright, so this is the, uh, I'm, in, I'm in a town called, uh, well it's Herion, uh, in Greece, or in Greek they would call it uh, Erion, <laughs> Erion or Erion, Erion, Erion. Uh, basically, it's a town uh, named after the goddess uh, Hera or Ira. Uh, I was just in Heraklion, Herak yeah, Heraklion or Eraklion. That's how they pronounce it. This is a either way. This is a very old building. Very cool uh, architecture. Just the style. Old stones. The Mediterranean rooftop tiles. I'm guessing this is just a... Well, it's an archaeological site is where I am. So this is a bunch of uh, pieces that they would have gathered throughout the uh, the site and gathered in one place maybe so people could walk around or something it looks like they have them all numbered so maybe they have some sort of idea where they came from yeah it says uh, exhibition of archaeological fragments <clears throat> but really I think the building is the coolest thing I wonder how old it is. I'd have to, I'll have to, I'll have to ask the guy. But even these pillars look really old. They're not the typical white pillars. These are like a, a brownish colored stone, black stone. <clears throat> it's kind of a, a different than what I've seen everywhere else. Okay, so this is the uh, the temple of Ira, or Hera, and uh, I'm on the the island of Samos, and this island is where Hera was born, or Ira. Now the island of Crete is where Zeus was born. Um, Zeus and Hera are brother and sister. They come from the same parents. Uh, Cronus was the father. And Cronus was, uh, well, he, he would eat his children <laughs> because uh, just to prevent them from gaining power and, uh, and uh, I guess, dethroning him. And uh, so he would eat his children and the mother which the, her name kind of escapes me at the moment, I don't know uh, what the mother's name was, but she would hide the children when they were born and replace them with things like goats or some other creatures, that, like a stone for Zeus, I believe. Um, and then the father would eat those, Cronus would eat those, and uh, think that he was eating the child when the child was you know, living... Well, Zeus was living in, a, in a, a cave in Crete, and uh, Hera was living here. So this is what's left of the Temple of Hera. There's one pillar standing, and it looks like it's kind of uh, uh, off balance there. <clears throat> um, so who knows? 
how long it's going to be standing. But um, yeah, so Zeus and Hera, they were both uh, brother and sister. They ended up, uh, I guess, getting married and having children. I guess I don't know if they really got married, but they ended up having children anyways. So it, uh, Hera was his wife, so they were husband and wife and father and children. But Zeus had many other wives too, or at least just women that he cheated on Hera with, um, if you would call it that. Um, uh, it looks like the path is running out. So I have to go back. I want to get over here. Maybe I can. There's a little pathway here. Um, <clears throat> and so each time that Zeus would take a different lover and then have children with that lover, um, or Zeus had many wives, I suppose, so each time he had a different wife, Hera would get jealous and cause problems um, either with that wife or with the children of that wife. Um, so there's numerous uh, stories about the jealousy of Hera uh, and, and the, the different sons and daughters of Zeus. Uh, looks like we got some uh, etchings into the, uh, the marble here. But alright, so. This is where Hero was born on Samos. And I was, again, I was in Crete already, and that's where Zeus was born. So I've been to where Zeus and Hero were born. Now there's another, another sibling from those same parents, uh, Cronus, and whoever the mother was. Uh, his name was Poseidon. And, uh, so... Oh, wait, and there was Hades also. Um, so between Hades, Poseidon, and Zeus, maybe those were the three male children, I don't know. Uh, but uh, Zeus, I guess, ruled the skies and the heavens, perhaps. Uh, Hades ruled the underworld. And then uh, Poseidon ruled the sea. So they had divided up their their kingdom or their territory amongst each other. But okay, so I'm uh, coming to the exit. This again is the uh, Temple of Hera in Samos. The town is actually Herion, Herion, Arion, Arion. I don't know how you pronounce it. And I guess I'll walk around this way. Uh, well, this is. I guess I'll have to figure out when this was built. I'm guessing this was around when uh, Pythagoras was was here. Pythag Pythagoras, Pythagoras lived here. Five uh, hundreds. BCE and uh, actually I think I'm gonna walk this way it's better so there's very little still remaining from that long ago um, let's see what this sign says maybe it'll give me a date Yeah, there, well, yep, 6th century BC. So that would be about the time. Yeah, Pythagoras would have seen this. Okay, here's a little uh, uh, a group of statues. Like, that's this right here. This is what's left of it. This would have been here when Pythagoras was here. <clears throat> um, and actually, I saw that in the museum of Samos, the Samos Museum. So. I'm not sure uh, if that's a repli replica or if the replica's in the museum or not, I don't know. But either way, Pythagoras would have been here 
This would have been, these actually probably stepped on these same exact steps that I'm walking on now. Um, I went to the the cave of Pythagoras or the cave of Pythagoras yesterday. It's probably the highlight of my stay here on Samos. And one of the highlights of my stay in Greece actually. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so he, this, he, he was born on this island and uh, lived here until he was about 18, I believe, or yeah, actually probably younger than that. Uh, went away to school, uh, studied in Egypt and in Babylon for many years, came back, had a some trouble with uh, Polycrates, Polycrates, the, the, the ruler of Samos, and ended up uh, moving out to Crotone in southern Italy to establish his school, the semicircle of Pythagoras. And uh, I guess that school existed for about 900 years. Um, and it was, uh, I guess, torn down about the time of Christianity uh, because it taught things that were not found in the Bible or the, the biblical teachings. So uh, it was they put an end to it. But all right, so this is the end. Once again, it's Dave signing off. I'm gonna go to my rental car, maybe grab some lunch, and head to the airport. On my way back home.